Hello, my name's Dawn Clark and I'm uh, part of the Congregation at Christ Church in Chilwell. And uh, I'm going to be looking at um, Psalm 30 today as part of our uh, readings over Lent. And um, yeah, I'm just going to read that to you now. It's actually taken from the Good News Bible. And it says it's a prayer of thanksgiving. I praise you, Lord, because you have saved me and kept my enemies from gloating over me. I cried to you for help, O Lord my God, and you healed me. You kept me from the grave. I was on my way to the depths below, but you restored my life. Sing praise to the Lord, all his faithful faithful people remember that the holy one what the holy one has done and give him thanks his anger lasts only a moment his goodness for a lifetime tears may flow in the night but joy comes in the morning i call to you lord i begged for your help you have changed my sadness into a joyful dance you have taken away my sorrow and surrounded me with joy. So I will not be silent. I will sing praise to you, Lord. You are my God. I will give you thanks forever. Oh, what a great psalm, isn't it? And actually, I don't know about you, but the one thing that really struck me when I first read that was... Um, just the, the end of verse five, where it says, tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't know about you, but um, as a mum, I worry about my children. And I don't think it gets any better the older they get. In fact, sometimes I think it gets worse. And, uh, and right now, it feels like there's lots of reasons to worry about our children. As parents, maybe we never stop worrying, but I think as parents we right now, there's going to be so many things just during this time to worry about. Some of you have had children uh, or babies in this time and, and you may be worrying about lack of social contact with, um, with family members, with close friends. Some of you have got school children and you may be worrying about uh, the lack of schooling or how you how you did while you were homeschooling. And again, lack of, of social contact with their friends and, and even grandparents, they may have not have seen them for maybe even a year. Um, and then as, as our children get older, there'll be some of you that have got children that are looking at um, going off to college or universities and they've not been able to, to go around those universities. They've had to do it virtually. And, and you'll be worrying about whether they're making the right choices. Uh, and even and even older children that maybe some of your, chil your children are, have lost their job in this time and they've got financial worries or maybe even relationship concerns. So much, so many things to worry about. And the list is just endless, isn't it? It's, it feels a bit strange that I'm talking to you just after Mothering Sunday when um, yesterday we'll have been remembering our mums and uh, I wonder how many of you were able to to see your mum or indeed to see your children. Uh, we were we were fortunate in that um, yeah we my mum lives close by and and Philippa lives close by, so that that was that was good. Um, so we could we could see them outside. Um, yeah, but some of you. Uh, may have had to do it virtually and some of you may have uh, even just been uh, putting some flowers in a vase or, or on a grave to remember them. Whichever way you um, remembered your mum, I hope, I hope it was with good memories and, and you had a, yeah, a, a, a good time. We, uh, we actually, um, at the beginning, of this lockdown. Some of you will remember that um, Ziggy had to move away and um, it, it, 
was that was a really difficult and a dark time for us and actually just that verse there with the tears that flow at night and the joy comes in the morning i was really reminded of of that of, of that situation with ziggy when he moved away um there were very many dark nights uh, when i lay awake worrying about him and, and worrying what would become of him because we had felt that we couldn't um provide the support he needed and we weren't the best people to take him onto that next part of his life um, but we always wanted him to know that we cared for him and um, and yeah and we still loved him and actually one of the wonderful things that happened this weekend is that Ziggy came to stay with us for the first time for the weekend and and that really felt like the second part of that after uh, those dark nights that joy comes in the morning and that was a joyful time to spend the weekend with him and, and particularly Mothering Sunday with him. But I'm just thinking that right now there'll be some of you listening to this that actually are still in that dark place, um, still uh, worrying about children and, um, and actually I just want you to know that actually God knows, God's got this, he's got you and he's got your child and that amazing, amazing truth that, you know, God loves them more than even we do, which is, seems hard to believe sometimes, doesn't it? When you just know how much as a mum and a parent, how much you love your child and that God actually loves them even more. So if you are somebody right now who is worrying about your child, can I just suggest that you write that little verse down there, that tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And so when you do struggle to fall asleep or when you do wake up in the small hours and you are worried and you can't get back, that if that verse is just by the side of your bed, you read that and just remember that joy will come in the morning. We don't know how long the night is, unfortunately. For some, it may be days, for some months, maybe for some years. But just to remember that promise that joy will come in the morning. And so I just want to finish actually with the last verse again of, of Psalm 30. So I will not be silent. I will sing praise to you. Lord, you are my God. I will give you thanks forever. Amen.